Hi, I'm Neil Priddy from Rare Record Collector and I'm here with BMG today to help uh, launch the new 10 year war box set from Black Sabbath. And we're at Regent Sound Studios and the reason we're here is that this is where this legendary album was recorded back in 1969. We are here to celebrate the forthcoming release of Black Sabbath's The Ten Year War. What makes Black Sabbath Black Sabbath is just an inquantifiable presence. Uh, in a musical way, really. There is an alchemy among the original lineup that you just don't get from most other musicians. It's like there's a fifth member in there somehow. Something happens when the four of them play together that you cannot describe. But what comes out is just unbelievable as a result. Regent Sound is the site of uh, the former studio where the Stones, Slade, and the Trolls recorded. And then, of course, Black Sabbath began their so called tenure war here. Um, by uh, genuinely recording two groundbreaking albums, the first two albums, of course. Uh, to discuss those two records and indeed the tenure war, we're delighted to have two members of the band tonight for you. Uh, the first of which, unfortunately, cannot be with us, though. But I'll tell you now, what he's done is a lovely fucking television message, which I'm sure you're going to enjoy. I believe that you guys are right now at Regent Sound Studios or what was Region Sound Studios, which is fantastic. We did some wonderful things at Region Sound. The band went to its, its main core, it went to its, its very core uh, and played from its heart and from its core. And it got rid of anything that was like objectionable, like you can't do that, you can't play that, don't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, and you can't, can't do that. So we went, well, yes, we were gonna get past all that, so fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, and fuck that, and fuck that over there as well. the lyrics, the riffs, the drums, the bass, the guitar, the vocals. What is there not to like about Sabbath? Mr. Tony Iommi, ladies and gentlemen. This is the room, I believe, where you recorded the first album, is it not? Uh, it looks familiar. <laughs> Up until that point, we'd never really recorded much in the studio, um, so it was uh, it was a very quick session here. We done about uh, I think the first album took uh, two days in all, and then we had to sort of fly off, uh, well, get in the van and go off to Germany. So it was a bit of a, a bit of a quick rush, really. But it was a great atmosphere, and we really enjoyed it. You know, it's, for us it was exciting because, you know, it's, we're actually in doing a record. It was very basic, the whole thing. We just stuck a, a, a guitar cabinet there with a, a baffle at the side of it and a mic in front of it. Bass rig was the same, right next to me, and then Bill, and uh, and then Ozzy was in a, a booth. So it was it was. Very, you know, just like you would in a rehearsal with baffles there, really. The one thing that also happened at that time was the, well, long and protracted relationship that you endured and enjoyed with the press as well when that album came out, which is actually why the box set is called The Ten Year War. It is based on that comic book that came out with uh, Around Never Say Die, I think, with... Uh, a whole load of reviews that we were reading upstairs where you got absolutely, no pun intended, crucified by the press. Oh, yeah. But, uh, for some reason, the, the, the British press just couldn't stand us in there. And, um, and so we, we got to a point where we said, that's it, we're not going to do any more press. It, it, it wasn't worth it. We were getting, we were getting better press by not doing press. The other thing that happened, obviously, which everyone knows about, is the fact that it wasn't your idea to do, well, two things. One is to add the rain and the tolling bell at the start of Black Sabbath itself. And obviously the other thing was the uh, inverted cross on the inside of the gatefold. Have you learned to live with both of those things now? <laughs> yes. No, I like it. Um, you know, at first, we, we just done the music and then Roger Bain and um, I forgot his name. Tom Allen. Tom Allen. Tom Allen. Yeah. Tom Allen. yeah. Uh, he 
they worked together and come up with the bell idea and, <clears throat> and it was good, it sort of worked. Uh, as far as the inverted cross, uh, we had no idea what that was until we saw the, the album cover. And uh, God, did we get some grief over that for all these years. You know. Well, you shouldn't have messed with things you didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have started in that place. Yeah, yeah.